day this the situation of clearance throughout this tree I'm seeing this this scarring here this is uh, the tree trying to encapsulate this injury uh, based on the wood it's aged so it's been here a while but I'm interested to discover what it is you can see that one there where I cut off Oh, it penetrates a few years, so be interested to see what it is. And there is the bark up in there. It's another thing to research, but you can see how the center has died out and uh, woodpeckers have gone after it to get the insects that were in it. Interesting tree. This is a tie-off that I use. Basically this goes to this. And this is the first wrap. So after that, come around, go this end over. And so just by unhooking that stub, the line is free without having to pull the end. So it's midline attachable, as they say. And each progressive wrap going from a different direction helps to support that stub so that the pressure doesn't drop, rip it off. And with this first initial wrap, a lot of the tension is taken up with friction on the branch. Okay, this is the finished product. Uh, there are several branches in there that were cut long as opposed to back at the trunk. Uh, primarily because trying to keep the foliage out and prevent it from looking bare. The other thing is, is by cutting it to trunk, it can introduce decay into the trunk much sooner than it would than if the branches that are longer started to decay and it worked its way back into the trunk. Uh, that's my reasoning and from what I understand the European standards for pruning uh, consider this also. So, uh, I'll show you some of the next one and pull this out and get going on the next.